Hello everyone, this is Sayyid Sagir Ahmad. I welcome you to our YouTube channel. In this video, Antihypertensives Part 2, I am going to explain the mechanism of actions of different categories of antihypertensive drugs. So before watching this video, please do watch my previous video that is Antihypertensive Part 1 where I have explained complete background of hypertension, lifestyle changes to reduce hypertension, classification of antihypertensive drugs, mechanism of action of AC inhibitors. This video is the continuation of part 1. So let's get started. Here we will see various subcategories of antihypertensive drugs comes under renin angiotensin system inhibitors. Before that, let me brief the process of increase in blood pressure by renin angiotensin system. Later we will see how these subcategories of antihypertensive drugs helps to treat hypertension by decreasing blood pressure. Whenever blood pressure decreases or the flow of blood towards the kidney is reduced at that time the specialized cells of the kidneys releases a hormone renin. This renin is transported to the blood where it will convert angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. Later angiotensin converting enzyme converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. Here Angiotensin 2 bind to 81 receptors that may leads to vasoconstriction, sodium and water reabsorption and aldosterone secretion. Increased vasoconstriction may leads to increased blood pressure. Increased sodium and water reabsorption leads to increased plasma volume which in turn increases blood pressure. Increase secretion of aldosterone from adrenal cortex increases the reabsorption of sodium and water which in turn increases plasma volume overall it increases blood pressure. Now let us understand the antihypertensive mechanism of subcategories of renin angiotensin system inhibitors. The second subcategory of renin angiotensin system inhibitor that is 81 receptor antagonist. Example is low sartan. We know antagonists are nothing but blockers. These are the agents which bind to the receptors and inhibit the binding of agonist on the same receptor and inhibit its action. In this case, 81 receptor antagonist bind to 81 receptor and inhibit the binding of angiotensin 2 to 81 receptors. Inhibition of binding of angiotensin 2 to 81 receptors may leads to decrease vasoconstriction decrease sodium and water reabsorption, decrease aldosterone secretion and this may leads to reduction in plasma volume and finally blood pressure decreases. Hence in this way hypertension can be treated. Third subcategory of renin angiotensin system or direct renin inhibitors. Example, Alice the word itself giving the meaning that these are the agents which inhibit renin and decreases its activity. Let us see how this is happen. There is a catalytic site on the renin where angiotensinogen will bind and leads to the formation of angiotensin 1. Here, Aliskyrin will bind to the catalytic site on renin and competitively block the axis of this site to angiotensinogen. Due to this, no angiotensin 1 is formed. 
if no angiotensin 1 is formed hence further processes will not be taking place so no more increase in blood pressure do you know the stimulation of sympathetic nervous system will also increases blood pressure yes at the time of stimulation of sympathetic nervous system there is a neurotransmitter called as noradrenaline which is released from the nerve terminal and will bind to beta receptors in the heart that causes increase in heart rate cardiac output and peripheral vascular resistance that finally increases blood pressure that is why we have another category of anti hypertensive drugs that is a sympathetic inhibitors in that the sub category is beta adrenergic blockers these are the agents which bind to beta receptors in the heart and causes decrease in cardiac output and decrease in peripheral vascular resistance now cardiac output is the amount of blood pumped by the heart per minute and peripheral vascular resistance is the resistance of blood vessels on the blood this is usually occurs due to vasoconstriction when cardiac output is increased the force of blood is increased therefore peripheral vascular resistance is increased here decrease in cardiac output and peripheral vascular resistance leads to decrease blood pressure <coughs> these beta adrenergic blockers also decreases the activity of beta receptors in the kidneys that leads to decrease the activity of renin and reduces the actions of angiotensin 2 that leads to inhibition of vasoconstriction reduction of sodium and water reabsorption decrease in the release of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex finally lower plasma volume and decreases blood pressure hence beta adrenergic blockers can be used to treat hypertension another category of anti hypertensive drug that is central sympatholytics examples are clonidine and methyl dopa clonidine is a selective alpha 2 receptor agonist in the central nervous system that stimulate alpha 2 receptor in the vasomotor center and decreases sympathetic outflow in the central nervous system that resulted in decrease noradrenaline release from the nerve terminal noradrenaline is a neurotransmitter which is released from the nerve endings and increases blood pressure here the release of noradrenaline is reduced by clonidine that may leads to decrease total peripheral vascular resistance and finally it resulted in decrease blood pressure methyl dopa is also a alpha 2 receptor agonist but initially it is converted into its active form that is methyl norepinephrine later it act similar to clonidine another category of anti hypertensive drugs are vasodilators the name itself indicating these are the agents which dilate blood vessels as we know very well one of the cause for hypertension is vasoconstriction where blood vessels are constricted resisting the flow of blood and blood pressure increases these vasodilators relaxes vascular smooth muscle and decreases peripheral vascular resistance 
usually peripheral vascular resistance is more when blood vessels are constricting during relaxation of blood vessels peripheral vascular resistance is less it is finally leads to decrease blood pressure one more category of anti hypertensive drug is calcium channel blockers calcium ion is an excitatory ion that increases force of contraction of heart and also constrict vascular smooth muscles calcium channel blockers such as virapamil diltiazem and nifedipine blocks l type calcium channels in the heart and vascular smooth muscles that leads to decrease calcium entry and calcium current into cardiac and vascular smooth muscles it causes relaxation of arteriolar smooth muscles relaxation of arterial smooth muscles decreases peripheral vascular resistance peripheral vascular resistance is increased when blood vessels are constricted here blood vessels are relaxing hence peripheral vascular resistance decreases all these effects leads to reduction in blood pressure hence calcium channel blockers can be used to treat hypertension another very important category of anti hypertensive drug is diuretics diuretics are the agents which increases urine output and eliminate sodium and water through urine in hypertension the reabsorption of sodium and water increases here sodium and water entered into the nephron for elimination as urine but within the nephron rather than eliminating sodium and water is transported back to the blood and plasma volume increases even sodium is an excitatory ion if the concentration of sodium increases in the blood that leads to vasoconstriction all together increases blood pressure administration of diuretics to a hypertensive patient increases the elimination of sodium and water when the elimination of sodium and water is increased plasma volume decreases specifically elimination of sodium may relaxes vascular smooth muscle by inhibiting vasoconstriction this leads to decrease cardiac output and decrease peripheral vascular resistance finally blood pressure is reduced hence diuretics are the most important drugs which are used to treat hypertensive patient